to begin with, this plantation was owned by the Alston family so, uh, un until the Lashikot family bought them out uh, back in my great-grandfather's time. Um, and I can't give you the actual date, I'd have to look it up. But anyway, uh, uh, they have this rice mill down here, which looked like it was, it was this. And people, the planters from the, the Waccamaw River and the P.D. River. Chicora Wood, for instance, had a, a, a little mill that would take the, the um, rice off, off the stalks. But none of them had, had the mill that would uh, take the, the cover off, off the grains and all. And, but Waverly had, had both of these things. And so um, they had, they would take care of um, various plantations, Waccamaw River and the Petey River in particular, and all, and, and some Black River ones. And, and this, and way back in, in my father's time, you know, everybody had to go by boat. You didn't have anything, you know, crossing those rivers. And, uh, but the Waverly Rice Mill had a, a boat that they named the Comanche. So you would have to take the boat to go to Georgetown. And uh, then you would have to get that same boat back, you know, and it was a private boat. But anyway, there are all these things. Um, this, is, this is rice right here now. Um, but uh, my brother's got that part now. And it's all um, just nothing but marsh area now. The house, all right, we moved it from over there and brought it around here and put it here. And these are the men who did it. And um, this one right here was one who did the flows. And he, when he finally finished here, he went over to Shakura Wood, a plantation on, on the PD, and did work there for about three years. I told him uh, he might as well just change his, he ought to just change his home over there. But they, uh, over there, they, um, at Shakura Wood, he, they took the, went down to the bottom of the, um, the boards on the roof and all, and so that uh, they could get, uh, you know, the what whitewash was on the side, and they reconditioned it and stuck it back on there. My father tells a story when the banks failed. They uh, went to Georgetown, and uh, the banks were closed, and they couldn't get any money out of it. And I'm trying, and I'm, so at that time things were were pretty bad. And you know, there's no economy that has taken the place of rice here, um, except tourists coming along to see some of these old plantations. And a good many of them come from Pennsylvania, New York State, but we, we have some people from Pennsylvania who've bought out some of these places and they make wonderful owners. Uh, for instance, Litchfield is owned by the Norris family and they are from um, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia in particular. But I, I must say, Pennsylvania needs to be given some credit for restoring some of these places. Uh, but these are some old pictures. This is the house when I was growing up. It was here, and it's it's now, you know, over over here because I wanted to see more, a better view of of the creek. That's Chapel Creek. And some documents it's called Chapel Creek, and others it's called Waverly Creek. You can take your pick. Uh, but anyway. Uh, we moved, my husband and I moved it over there, and we were living in Charleston at the time, and um, they moved it uh, one day when um, we didn't come up, and it's a good thing because I would have died of a heart failure because they had to go the whole way around, you know, and slip it in, and it could have fallen off that thing so easily. Well, it goes back uh, before the war between the states, but it wasn't, uh, you know, that they, they uh, uh, the Alston family had it, and the Alstons owned half, just about, well, two-thirds of the whole county. My great-grandfather added, you know, into, to the present dimension. And um, then when uh, my husband and I put it here, moved it from over there, and then brought it here, uh, changed, uh, added, added what you see back there, and then changed some of the arrangements. But I can remember growing up in here, and the parlors were, you know, one, I think that was the parlor then, and the dining room was the other way, and it just, I, we changed it around. But um, uh, anyway, the, these, uh, this flooring that you see now is the one that came from upstate somewhere, and where this eighth grade guy somehow found it and 
And uh, I can remember when he was putting us down, he'd say, they slick, ain't they? And I said, yeah. And uh, he was quite a character. You know, I had uh, the guy um, that put one of the, you know, the mantelpiece here, and then there's one farther back in there. And um, then this is an old chest that um, my father got. It belonged to one of the Lucas family somewhere and gave it to me and I had it down there in uh, Charleston for a while and brought all that up. But, um, and this is me by the way here, uh, when uh, I can't remember the name of the artist, but you started off down there now Charleston and ended up here. And um, my mother insisted that I sit for it. And, um, and I did. And she flattered me like crazy. And I can remember when I was a child and I was making cakes and you see all these little things like this? They didn't know that it would create this mall, but I can remember when they would, would make all these cakes and would have the servants and all do that, and they just plopped these hot dishes, you know, down on it and haven't been able to get it out of there, you know. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, I want you to know that these, have you ever seen these before? The Alice U.G. Smith, oh well, I uh, got those when they, they were first bringing those out down in Charleston and I bought them. It cost me a fortune to do it and put them up there so that people would have some idea about what rice planting was and, it, you know, how they went about it. And um, Alice U.G. Smith, uh, I think, uh, was one who did all that and she died oh, a long time ago, but she was also a good friend of the Alston, uh, um, Elizabeth. Oh, Mrs. Pringle over there at Shakura Wood. But I clear out of here when, when the tours go on because I don't want to hear what people say because I can tell them right now. They say, well, why in the wide world did she have this put in here? I've been uh, letting Prince George uh, use uh, uh, the place. Otherwise, Arcadia would be the only place they could get. And, you know, Litchfield, that's an old house there at Litchfield, part of it is and they've got a few uh, additions there. But uh, that's not on it. And, uh, uh, and Paul Lulu Pate, you know, uh, she's been the one who's sort of stood up for this area. But Arcadia, you know, it, uh, is, is quite a, a place. And you see pictures of that from time to time on uh, TV. This came from the Mohawk Valley up in New York State, uh, in the Hudson River, I believe, somewhere uh, up that way. And um, my mother and those got it when they had the hamming shop and all, and I, so I said, well, I'd like to have that. And so I managed to get it. And, but I don't work it because I'm so scared all, everything will fall apart. And I thought, I'll just let it stay like it is. I think it's wonderful that Prince George Church sponsors these plantation tours, and people just flock to them, you know, and Charleston just had to give it up completely. But Georgetown is so small and people, and I get my Charleston friends to come up here and they go, and, and as you know also, people have come down here from uh, Greenville, Spartanburg, and they, they and Rock Hill, where in Columbia, of course, and they tour by day and uh, by night they, they play bridge. <laughs> or <laughs> Paul is out into somebody's house, or, or we go to Merle's in there to eat, or maybe to Georgetown to eat. Um, and anyway, we get a lot of people down here. And there was Mrs. Pringle, Elizabeth Alston Pringle, Shakura Wood Plantation. Uh, she was just, I consider her and then Genevieve Chandler to be the two most outstanding women uh, in Georgetown County in the 20th century. I really do. And, um, and I think, and of course, uh, uh, Elizabeth Austin Pringle uh, planted rice over there when her husband died suddenly down in Charleston. Oh, it would be, I'm trying to think, 1875, 1890, sometime along in that. Anyway, she, she just went on by herself and uh, uh, planted rice. And this is when she started sending these um, little uh, bits up to what is it, the New York newspaper, and they started publishing it, and that's what formed the basis of uh, a woman rice planter. 
and she needed to, she needed the money. And by the way, she would come over and, and earlier than that, Wavell Rice Mill was still going, and she brought they they have a threshing mill over there at Shakur Wood, but not a pounding mill. The threshing mill takes the the rice off the big stalks, and the pounding mill takes the the cover off the rice itself. And um, she used to come here way way before my time and all to do all that, but. You, you go through Thoroughfare Creek, you know, from the Walkmall River, and you hit the PD, you know, and they could come through that creek. And so they would come to Waverly to get all that rice done. But, but I consider Mrs. Pringle, and she was, her husband died suddenly, and she had to make some money. And so she, she sent these um, things up to uh, uh, New York City, you know, and they published it up there. She'd make it so colorful. And uh, that's where the woman rice planter comes in. And then she did the book on uh, Chronicles of Shakura Wood. Both of them are just gems. And she tells about, you know, they're coming back, you know, after the war was over, you know, and, and um, uh, the colored people were there and her mother, uh, they came there and, um, and uh, the mother just managed to, to hold her dignity in the most amazing way. They didn't have the keys to the Shakura Wood house, and uh, and finally, uh, Miss uh, uh, Alston, which would be now um, Elizabeth Alston Pringle's mother, uh, went, you know, and just um, uh, demanded the keys, and they gave them to her. Uh, she just she knew she had to make it good. She had to be had to be very self-contained and all. And that's the way they got the keys to that house. Uh, it's just amazing. Um, and then she started, of course, uh, you know, they all started planting the rice and all, and so they, they would bring, bring it over here to, for the, um, the pounding part and all, but they've, they've still got the, the, the other, other part over there at Shakura Wood. Um, but uh, I, I consider uh, Elizabeth Olsen Pringle and then uh, uh, Genevieve Chandler of Merle's Inlet to be the two most outstanding women Huh? She was a friend of your mother's? Very much so. And, and when, uh, and, and as you know, she did those interviews to make money during um, uh, Franklin Roosevelt's um, term when he was trying to pull the country together. And uh, when the Huntingtons opened Brook Green, uh, they got her to be the hostess. And I wish you could have known her. She was one of the most charming people you can imagine, just full of energy. And she and my mother were good friends well, on her day off, and back then she could get Saturday off from, from um, Brook Green, uh, and they should come to the hammock shop, and she and my mother were kindred spirits. They would talk about books and poem, poetry, that sort of thing, and they would spend about two or three hours doing all that sort of thing. Um, but um, uh, I think Genevieve Chandler, I, I think it's amazing. Her husband died, and she had, I think, what, four children? To, to a raise, and the Huntingtons made her, you know, the hostess at Brook Green. And you know that building where they have the small statuary? Well, as you enter that first part over this way, it was a counter. And this is where she would talk to the people who came down, and she was so exuberant. And she would talk to them, and you'd see about a dozen or maybe two dozen people just wide-eyed listening to her because she could tell all these stories. And you she was so animated about it. And as I say, she was just so remarkable. The real Alice uh, is buried at All Saints Church, uh, to the best of my knowledge. But all this, but um, Genevieve's brother, who inherited uh, uh, the place up there at Merrill's Inlet, wanted something that was, um, I think, uh, would catch attention in the newspapers. And so uh, they had all this to do about Alice, which uh, I don't think could possibly be true. But anyway, if you go to all the cemetery at All Saints Church, you can see where people have gone around and around and around this grave that says Alice. Well, I don't think it's the really the Alice that they're talking about. It's a different Alice completely, who died all on her own. Uh, sort of thing, uh, but the but they don't tell that to the tourists because uh, they want the tourists to keep coming. It was a family that had a hasty point, and um, uh, the daughter of that family perished 
the Weston family, were, they were wealthy before the war between the states, and they would go down and they had a house in Charleston, you know, for the social season. And Pauline Weston, uh, oh, oh, she was just, I think, also remarkable. Um, she invested the money in supplies and opened a small store over there on that area and sold whatever people needed. And that is what really kept her family going. And it helped to educate her brothers and sisters and all that sort of thing. And the final thing that was so ironic, you know, is um, uh, one day uh, her uh, little store caught on fire and she dashed out and remembered that she had left her money in there. And so she went back in to get it and she died. Uh, the smoke got her and, and the, the building crashed on her. But she was just one of the most remarkable, remarkable people. And she was a close friend of uh, Miss Pringles. And both of them being examples of women taking hold after the war between the states and doing the best they could, and they both did it magnificently. And that big building you see over there was the, uh, was the kitchen, because you, all of these plantations had separate kitchens because if the kitchen caught on fire, it meant that the whole house would not fall on, on uh, fire. And that's a smokehouse right there, right, that small one right by there. And then this is a dairy that my maiden aunts, for whom I'm named, uh, had a dairy. And they had the, and the, the, the shed with all these stalls, you know, long gone. Now, uh, right here, you see where this oak tree is right here? That's where the, where the um, uh, building uh, was, you know, where, um, the, where they made the, the tubs and all the, the barrels that they would ship the rice in and that that was right right in this area and now uh, over there right down there is where where the big rice mills were right right down that area the rice field was at, right on the other side of it uh, and it's nothing but just sort of grown up now but that's where all that was and and the boats would dock there um, Chapel Creek. that's Chapel Creek and all, on some maps and Waverly Creek on other maps. Out to the Waccamaw. Out to the Waccamaw River. And down over there, uh, across that fence, way down there, all that was part of Waverly too, way back in my grandfather's time. Uh, here, we had not only the rice mill that my uh, grandfather operated, but his one of his brothers operated a huge uh, sawmill, which is right over that way, farther up the creek. It was huge, and, uh, you, and you would never know that now because all that, the sawdust is, fallen down, you know, and into the water and all. And it's also been developed, and so you wouldn't know that was there. But they had a lot of people working here um, until the end of rice planting. It must have had, I would say, at least, I would guess now, maybe a couple of hundred people What between the two enterprises. Um, um, and so when rice planting went out, I mean, it was rough because there just was no economy. Thank heavens for Highway 17, because it took getting that done. I can remember when you went to Georgetown and you had to take the ferry boat down there, right where Hobcaw Barren is, you know, where you see these little stumps, and you'd land on, you'd go to the uh, front street, you know, and they had a boat there, and the boat would dock there, and you would have to come back the other way. But I can remember that as a child. Um, and, and, that's the way you had to get there then, but before that, but that beats having to take a boat from here to get to Georgetown. Uh, my mother and father um, were uh, on the way to Georgetown to buy some stuff when, um, the, the, uh, Lord, everything failed, you know, in the 1930s, you know, and they closed the banks and all that sort of thing, and they lost everything they had in the way of, uh, of money and savings and all. And, and uh, you didn't have these highways, it was, it was rough then, but how things have changed.